Shipping out live invertebrates can be a very scary process, especially when it's your first time doing so, and especially when you are shipping out an animal that's as fragile as a stick insect. But do not fear any longer. By the end of this video, you will have learned the safest and most efficient way of shipping out phasmids. So to begin with, let's talk about when you should and shouldn't ship phasmids. You shouldn't ship out first insta stick insects. First insta nymphs are insects that have just emerged from their egg. The reason for this is because a lot of the first insta individuals perish before they even have their first molt for various reasons. This is why stick insects lay many eggs, because not all survive till adulthood, and a lot of the mortalities happen during the first insta. Another reason as to why you shouldn't ship out first insta nymphs is because their gender can only be observed at their second insta. But of course, this is only a worry if you have fertilised eggs and if the receiver of the phasmids cares about which sex they are given. You also shouldn't ship out phasmids that look as though they may molt by the time they reach their destination. During the molting process, phasmids are at their most fragile, so any rough handling of parcels that have a molten insect inside may permanently damage or even kill the invertebrate. Lastly, any phasmids bigger than Insta4 should not be shipped out in the post due to the higher chance of wounding or death. The larger and heavier the insect is, the higher the chance that the insect may be hurt if they are knocked around. What you should be shipping out are phasmids that are between Insta2 and Insta4. These nymphs should be strong enough and small enough to make it to their destinations alive and well. Now let's get to the shipping preparation. To begin with, you will need a large plastic container to house the phasmids while they are getting shipped. The size may have to vary depending how many and how big the insects are that you are shipping. Ideally, the container needs to be higher rather than longer. At Cassie's Critters, we use 1000ml containers tipped on their side and house no more than 4 small insta nymphs inside. The insects shouldn't be cramped and should have enough room to fully relax their abdomens without touching another insect. Once you have a container, melt ventilation holes on all sides except the bottom. I use a handy dandy needle and lighter for this step. A moist piece of paper towel should then be placed on the bottom of the container to provide humidity. A small branch with mature leaves should then be harvested. Young tender leaves will dry out more quickly compared to mature leaves, which is why the latter is recommended. The end of the branch should then be covered with a heap of wet paper towels and then held together by a hair tie or elastic band. The branch can now be placed into the plastic container. The branch must be able to fit firmly within the container and must not be able to move once the lid is attached, otherwise it could be a crushing hazard for the insects. Now you can add the nymphs into the container and then mist the container with a little bit of water and then carefully attach the lid. To pack the container into the postage box, start by placing one or two scrunched up pieces of newspaper on the bottom of the box. Carefully wrap a piece of newspaper around the container and place into the box. Then fill up all the remaining spaces with more newspaper. Tape up the box firmly and then add all of your postage labels. I recommend putting some type of fragile labels on at least three sides of the box and arrows to dictate how the box should stand. And now your stick insects are ready to be shipped out to their destination. But before heading to the post office, please double check your state and the receiver's state laws to make sure that no permits are required for shipment of live goods. In Australia, the states of Western Australia and Tasmania require permits.